tell us in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button and share this video with everyone you know. During that time, um, when I signed up, I don't even know how to swim. I don't have a bike. I only know how to run. So yeah. that's how small my experience in the sport. But again, when you want something, you'll do everything, right? So yeah. I only had about, um, it was August. So I'm left with about seven months to train. So once I signed up, I decided to get a swim coach to teach me how to swim because I don't really know how to swim. And in a month, I was able to swim 1K, dire diretso. And yeah. then uh, fast forward January, I decided to get a bike. So I have a few months left and then that is a 70.3 distance. Um, yeah. 70.3 distance would mean 1.9 kilometer swim, uh, followed by a 90K bike and then you, you cap it off with a 21K run. So putting that all together is a challenge. So with those few months that I had, I had to make it happen. And yeah. by August, uh, I was um, tearful and so happy to cross the finish line for my wow. very first 7.3. <laughs> wow. Which, so um, motivated me to do it. Uh, before that, I was into running marathons. Yeah. So I was... Again, I had to go through several distances from short going to long. And after doing uh, several marathons, uh, I'm up for a new challenge. So I told myself, what's the next challenge um, apart from finishing marathons? So yeah. I said, why not bring in another sport and another skill? So I thought of not yeah. just another, not just another sport, not two more sports. <laughs> yeah, two more. Yeah. So yeah. because it's more, it's challenging yourself to yeah. the boundaries, to push your limits, and knowing that um, you have the capacity to do it because you had your self check, and it's yeah. really knowing more of your ability as a person knowing your strength because but mostly i compete only in asia uh so basically this malaysia taiwan korea yeah. then i had to do it twice and some thrice and then yeah. um to add to that is the philippines because we had our philippines. first full ironman distance competition way back in 2018 so uh basically it revolves around korea uh korea uh, Taiwan, Malaysia, and the Philippines. And of course, I yeah. wanted to try the European countries uh, later on for, to complete. Uh, Did 12. you get it? Po? Did you get to compete in European races? Not so yet. Because of the <laughs> lot of there are, there are yeah. plans like Australia and uh, European races, but again, we had to. <laughs> yeah. We have to live with it. We yes, with yes. It. Understandable. But among the nine countries, po, coach, I gotta, I gotta ask, which one was the most challenging, and which one's your favorite? Or is there like a specific race na that leaves a remarkable uh, stint for you? Uh, I think the most memorable race for me, um, well, apart from the first, I'll, I won't really forget my first, the first yeah, Iron race. race. Yeah, Malaysia, Langkawi. But I guess the most memorable one is in Korea. I think that was in 2017. Yeah, yeah in 20, Seoul. Four. Yeah, it is in, uh, no, not in Seoul. Uh, it, it, it's in another part of Korea. And I, um, I remember I went to the race having an injury. So oh. because of too much training, I guess, too much too soon. I had a major injury in my hip um, and then I only had 10 days left before the race. Yeah. So I have to decide whether to push it or not. But again, the fire inside me, as well as being stubborn, <laughs> I decided to go for it. So I went to Korea, uh, Gure, uh, we, they call it, the place is in Gure, Korea. And then I decided to take one leg at a time. I yeah. told myself, uh, if I don't get to finish, that's fine. But at least I showed up and then started. 
and towed the finish at the starting line. So I I just told myself I swam um, 3.8 kilometers and then finished the bike 180 kilometers. So one at a time, and then the nagging pain in my hip started in the run. So I was really contemplating al DNF na lang. I, I, yeah, I made yeah. it far, so I don't wanna hurt myself. Na lang hindi. Yeah. yeah, and but then that's, that's... it's just the inner voice that tells me that, come on, you just go one step at a time, one step at a time. Yeah. So I, I I had to push myself through it and endure the pain, and then I'm really happy when I cross the finish line. It's one of the fastest races I've I've ever done. So. It's really surprising and a major revelation to yourself that if you don't give yeah. up, you'll get surprised you can, in the thoughts. Yes, yeah. that's really nice to hear. Thank you for that, Coach. From being a triathlete, like competing in tournaments, like what you had mentioned, how did when did you realize that you wanted to become a coach as well? Did the opportunity just present itself to you, or um, you this was something that you wanted from the start, being a coach? Uh, very good question because um of course i never dreamed or i never um uh, thought that i would be a coach as well but yeah but by, by experience uh by doing a lot of races by training with your friends you see the potential that uh, hey you can coach you can teach someone you can change yeah. a, someone through sports uh i remember when i was taking my mba it, we were asked to define our purpose in life. Mm -hmm. That's such a good exercise because I wrote an essay and then I said that I wanted to teach. So as the opportunities come by, it shows it. It shows that I wanted to teach. It always reflects. Yeah. Even then when I was working, I was really uh, good in mentoring. So um, that I guess cascaded in everything that I do, and even if I go into sports, I was really um, interested in teaching. So yeah. I had to find ways on how I can can become a certified coach because uh, some they can claim that they they can be a coach by because of experience. Well, uh, it would be good if they have a proper training as well if you can get certified so yeah. i have to tell myself that i have to be an official coach right so um if you're asking the opportunity didn't didn't just fall on my lap um it's more of uh, really contemplating and realizing that i can teach because being yeah. an athlete it's entirely different from being a coach from being a coach yeah this yeah. is an athlete is to be as I've, I've shown the photo of the award is to be yeah. one of the top age groupers that uh, in my age group um, that's already uh, considered an achievement for me and but uh, for me the biggest achievement that I've um, that I, I think I've fulfilled is to teach someone is yeah. to groom someone is yeah, to talaga, no? yeah is to let someone finish the the race that they wanted to and to let them cross the finish line without any injury and to just to make them feel fulfilled and accomplished because they were able to achieve their goal through fitness yeah. and through sports so that is the biggest achievement for me to share my learnings to motivate them and to help them reach their goals in terms of triathlon yes yeah. While there are achievements and fulfilling um, experiences, naman po, I'm pretty sure there are challenges as well. If I may ask, what are some of the challenges you endured throughout the past couple of years, both as a coach and as a triathlete? Po? And how did you like? What did you get out of? What did you get out from it? And what did you learn? Po? As an athlete, injury. So that's very common, yeah. right? Uh, yeah. You get addicted to the sport. Sometimes yeah. you over, well, a lot of times <laughs> you you overtrain, uh, and if you don't have a structured training plan, you tend to do everything without knowing the benefits, or you're just doing junk miles. So 
um, one of the challenges would be how to cope with injury and how to still move uh, and then recover from that injury. Yeah. Uh, in my case, I had a bad um, case of hip injury. And During I, Korea, no? Yeah. Yes. And I had to literally cut down on my training and even on my yeah. coaching sessions because yeah. the recovery pala is rest. So yeah. no matter how much you had therapy, you had, you had so much medical treatment, but if you don't rest, so nothing will happen. So I had to to have a hard lesson on that. So as a coach, um, the challenges would be how to manage their time as well because they have they fulfill many roles in life. So yeah. I have to adjust my training plan according to their lifestyle. So that's yeah, one of the yeah, yeah. uh, For example, if they're not being able to accomplish the training load because they have to go to work, they have um, they have other responsibilities at home. The challenge should be how to tailor fit the training tailor plan fit. according to yeah. their lifestyle. And it's yeah, not yeah. that easy because if you handle so many students and it's not that uh, like a cookie cutter approach that you yeah. one thing. Man is, is applicable to all so you have to really take note of their individual preferences in trainings it's one of the challenges yeah yeah coach i'd like to ask before we go to break no if there's an advice or encouraging words you constantly tell your uh, trainees or the ones you train or right now if there's an advice you'd like to share to someone who has dreams of pursuing triathlon professionally like you one day or even coach uh what would it be i would suggest to believe in yourself that's the first mm -hmm. thing to do um your body and your mind is limitless so as long as you set your goal into something you have you should have the resilience commitment and dedication yeah. And you can do anything you want. So as long as you believe yourself and as long as you trust the process and your training, you can really accomplish anything. It's not all about swim, bike, run in my life yeah. anyway. So coaching still um, forms a major part of it. But apart from that, I also do consult yeah. in the retail industry. So that's my day job. And then I also spend time with my uh, family. So yeah. um, basically, that, that that gives you more of a balance um, side of it because life is not all about swim, bike, run. So you have to also nurture your other talents and um, nourish the important relationships in yeah. your life. Yeah. So I guess the values that I picked up, um, the values of having fair play. Fair um, play. Yes, so that is very important, not only on the corporate side, um, but also in, in, of course, in the sports. Uh, fair play and also respect. Respect to your fellow athletes, respect yeah. to your bosses, to your co-workers, uh, respect even the distance that you're into. So you should always respect the distance because some they can if they're especially if they're seasoned athletes they can say oh kaya po yan. I mean it's just an Olympic distance but yeah. when they're in the race they encounter injury they get yeah. cramping so respect the distance for me whether it's gonna be short or long respect the distance and of course the values of hard work and hard work yeah yeah you know, there's no overnight success. Um, there's no like instant na, hey, I'm fast, hey, I'm great, hey, I'm wonderful, yeah. I'm awesome. Uh, you just see the tip of the iceberg. So what people don't see are the hours that you spend on training, the hours that you spend on researching how to better yourself, and the hours that you spend on just building up your confidence and how to improve it. So um, those are the three main values that I've uh, picked up from having sports. And I guess the the par, e even the little ones um, can relate to this, the value of discipline. Discipline, yeah. Especially in triathlon, no? But the yeah. lagad. I guess in any sport, yes, you're right. You have to wake up at 5 o'clock. Earlier pa nga, diba? I've never 
I've covered <laughs> Iron Man events, yung Alaska Iron Kids, and yung Iron Man itself. Like call time is at 4:30. <laughs> <But> <laughs> so, yeah, and if so you're a normal kid, why would you wake up that early? Yeah. yeah. So it's really Hard. different the discipline that comes with the sport. Yeah. yeah. So it's really the discipline of not only waking up early but having um, a structure to your day. So you have to train and you have to go to school, you have to go to yeah. work. So it's really trying to fit those productive things all in a day. And you can't do that we don't, if you don't have a discipline, if you don't have the heart to do it uh, and to fulfill those kinds of multiple activities in a day. It's more of um, time management on how to juggle your time and also finding your priorities. Yeah. I don't have a futuristic view about it because, uh, yeah. of course, we wanted everything to come back to normal. Yes. But yeah. this is our new normal. So yeah. I guess uh, the proliferation of virtual races will still continue. So that's for sure. Until a vaccine is uh, out and approved, that's the only time that we have the confidence to go back into racing. Because most of them, parang tinatamad na because there's no yeah. right no like training. Yeah. Right? So we just wanted to know everyone to know in the triathlon scene that we're still here. The coaches are still here. It doesn't mean that um, you don't have to train because there's no race. You train for your fitness. You train for yourself. Uh, you train how to build again energy and then make yourself stronger despite the lockdown and there's so many ways how to do it number one is you can you don't really have to work out that much you can focus on your diet so on your nutrition right because yeah. if you have corrected the bad eating habits during the lockdown the, yeah. the chances of you training will be higher because you're lighter you feel healthier at the same time, um, you're fitter to train. And uh, next would be uh, once you've lost, um, for example, weight, you, you can go back into harder training sessions because um, you're more ag agile, you're fitter. So those are the, the ways that to motivate the students. Um, apart from that, uh, we, again, constant checking with each other. We normally connect through zoom or we yeah. do on classes for the biking session um so you just have to stay in touch um because in the lockdown the, the most important thing is you, you should have someone to talk to right you, the connection to everyone is very important so you can tell them that i'm still here that uh we can still work together into building your fitness so you train for yourself train for fitness um to the youth because uh, they wanted to do all sorts of things they're really yeah. on the exploratory stage right so when you're young you wanted to try so many different things so there will come a point that um you have to listen to your inner self uh you have to know what you want you have to um set your goal based on your dreams based on your um desires that you want so you have to listen to that inner self that inner voice again it's finding out it's it's really pinpointing what you want in life uh at an early stage and from there you build your dreams from that um for for, for triathlon uh, it's such a surprise to me that i'm into it uh, i didn't discover it when i was young but again uh, i guess the purpose of teaching drove me into this and the purpose of teaching drove me into this kind of career now which is coaching so for the youth it would be great if you would have that exercise just to write down what you want to accomplish in life uh, just take like um 30 minutes or even an hour to to jot down what you want it, it, it's good that you write it down and then later on you'll be surprised when you're in that level you'll find that notepad that hey i wrote it down yeah. seven years ago and now i'm doing what i want so yeah. it's such a good exercise just to write down, have a diary, jot down what you want to do in life. So you have to take baby steps. 
baby um, step yeah yeah so you have to find good in the bad uh, all of us now have I like that yeah. and seeing different kinds of stress and anxiety because of the pandemic so you have to find good in the bad so what i say baby mm-hmm. steps for example if you want to get uh, a head start on your fitness um and you're just at home um a good start would be doing like five push-ups or doing 10 push-ups it's a good start so you have to start small uh, in terms of your fitness goals and then once you find um fun of your find joy in it you take it to a different level so before you start with um 1k walk one one kilometer walk that's how you start and you you can say that oh it makes me feel good and uh, so the next three days i will do it 1.5k so start from small uh, and realistic goals rather than promising yourself oh i'm gonna do 10k a day and then on day three wala na. so it's good that you start small but steady steadily growing yeah. rather than start with audacious goals and then end up um quitting midway so that's how i would recommend for everyone to start with their fitness goals uh again you you turn around a difficult situation to something productive now, instead of just sulking on Netflix, instead of just browsing through the internet, social media, uh, why not move? Uh, force yourself to move. Maybe just um, cleaning the house. You just have to force yourself to do something more productive than being stuck in, in a very uh, static situation. So I guess you have to move. To make it happen there like many aspects of life it takes time to master the skill you need you it takes time to master the skill that you do for coach Nyla, it was triathlon let alone to teach all young ch- young children or to train them coach Nyla's story taught us that we can only push ourselves to be the best version of ourselves if we root it from passion and finding our call through life through commitment, hard work, and respect for the sport and those around you, we can find those doors that lead you to different opportunities that make you the best version of yourself. Just like how Coach Nyla became a coach and a triathlete who has hopes and dreams to represent the country one day in the World Ironman Tournament. Stay tuned for the next episode. Only here on Z81 Radio, Manila.